go live we are live we are live i hope we get your big girl panties on patrick r from huh? the firearm rack has joined us tonight there he goes look check him out what right huh? there ready for trouble yes trouble t roy that should be your middle name patrick uh, trouble t roy roberts <laughs> what does no? he stand for <laughs> for extra trouble <laughs> <laughs> trouble trouble roy yeah <laughs> patrick evan yeah. trouble trouble roy robert my mama my like mama called me trouble mouthful. <laughs> yeah oh there you go. <laughs> so we've got patrick here uh we're yes. we're gonna have some good conversations with him i'm sure plus plus check it out i couldn't show you i actually gave you guys like a little sneak peek but we could get we could deep dive into it max Pedition has some brand new bags out and these are the first ones that you will see anywhere in the universe so we've got we've got two of them here that one was the rift blade and this is the rift point from uh from expedition so we're going to talk about those and uh they've got my balls inside of them hmm, there you go so uh, i don't know if don't know how I feel about having a conversation <laughs> with ball sex. Oh yeah, well we are. We're gonna we're gonna have that conversation. And I've got extra balls. I got to get you to buy these. I mean, come on, you should have these laying around for the for the kiddo. I know. Uh, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> soon. No. He's got yeah. a hell of an arm on him. I well, so uh, my dog would probably eat them all up. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say maybe he would destroy them. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're gonna do that. We got a bunch of things going on. Um, I've got a package here from Iraq Veteran. This is one of this their uh, man cans. I might open this live on air. Maybe give some stuff away in here. And I would do that for people going to look at the video that we just posted. So you can actually help us out on if you go to the Hank Strange YouTube channel and look at that video. Open it in another window. Just open it, let it run over there. You can you can look at two things. You guys can multitask. Go over there, open it, and comment on the video. Uh, like it, all that kind of good stuff. And when I open up this man can, I might be giving out some stuff here to some folks because we're going to go over and look at the video later. Patrick, you also have an idea of some trouble that you want to look. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anybody that wants to jump on here and disagree with me about something, like do you do you think I don't I don't really see a world where people disagree with you? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like there might be one or two out there. So uh, yeah, uh, the the idea being is uh, whenever you email me at Patrick at firearmrack dot com, uh, we will send you a link where you can come on here, uh, briefly make your case, and then uh, <laughs> we can talk through it with you not on for how long for how long wait are you gonna <laughs> how long are you gonna let this person talk through this yeah, yeah, yeah. so they've, they've got uh up to five minutes to make their case and then that is it and if you can change my mind cool wait okay five minutes where you're not gonna argue with them or just five I, minutes i can't promise them? that i can't promise oh, that okay okay what kind of world is this <laughs> yeah sounds interesting i sounds interesting i don't know if anyone will take us up on it but we'll see yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll we'll deep dive into that. Let's uh, go shout out all the people joining us right now. Let me remind everyone, like, hit the thumbs ups, guys. You know, we really appreciate those thumbs ups. So uh, go ahead, hit that, share this video, all that kind of good stuff. We appreciate you being here. And, you know, ironically enough, Patrick, the Tyvin show was the first person in the chat today. Well, I, I, don't, I can't see him anymore. Yeah, I think I think the Tyvin show said, you know, Patrick R is coming on. I'm going to be first in the chat today. So shout out to him. <laughs> he, he wanted to make sure he got that distinction. Christopher Williams also in there. He's back. Shout out to him. Hope he's he's doing better. The Tyvin show was first and second. I don't know how that's I, I don't understand what's going on there. But shout out to the Tyvin show. Christopher Williams, Ridge Runner, Bricks as well. Uh, Corey Williams also here. Special K says, evening, strangeaholics. One more day till the weekend. That's right. One more day till the weekend. Michael Bender's here as well. He says, hello, strangeaholics. Happy Thursday. Boss Hog is in here. Let's see. Who, let's see who else is in here. Jay Brennan, Richard Hughes. Ghetto Dr. Phil says hi. Ghetto Dr. <laughs> Phil. Uh, I don't get Dr. Phil's already ghetto. I don't understand. That's like the trouble T Roy, right? 
Doctor Ghetto Doctor Phil? Or... Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> CW Hunter wanted to know why Tyven and Patrick have beef. Patrick doesn't have beef with Tyven. Patrick just does not tolerate ignorance well. Okay. That's 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 your answer. Uh, I, I just so I don't I don't I don't handle the dumb. When so two well. objects of equal and opposite ignorance meet what? in yeah. the universe. I, I will I, you know, where's that red button? <laughs> <laughs> There's something about this in physics. <laughs> if you look it up, you will see, and you will see Time and Show, and then you will see Patrick there, you know, head to head. So I've tried. Uh, listen, I've tried to get them to do like a celebrity <laughs> boxing match, but uh, they're not interested. Harry, we we've done a show with Tyvin and, and I on here, and I about like murdered something. Yeah, he was he there was lots of extra I thought he was gonna wear out the slide on his Glock during that show. <laughs> so if you want if you see and you know what I'm surprised, man. There's no there's no guns. No, no guns as of yet. No. I don't I don't even oh what here? Yeah, they're all No, well, I'm not I'm not saying go yeah, I'm not saying go get something, but no, yeah, they're, they're all back there. Yeah. Also, shout out to Walter. Walter was supposed to join us. He's apparently working in the shop. Hopefully, he's listening to us in the shop. Um, so we could we could probably talk bad about him. We could call today. Talk bad about Walter Day. Let's see if he's listening. If we, no, you know, <laughs> can can we troll I, Walter? I like Walter. Walter's good people. <laughs> I, listen, I I love him, but I think I would still troll him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, not gonna pass up the chance to troll him though. Sicko three sixteen says sounds like Patrick is basically Yankee, and everyone who disagrees is an idiot slash ignorant. No, no. Um, what makes you an idiot or ignorant is when you get in a public forum and start talking loudly about shit that you don't truly understand or even sort of understand, like stuff that you found scrawled on the bathroom stall at a truck stop isn't lore. That that's that's what makes you an idiot. Um, to be clear. Okay, understood, understood. I feel like there's going to be lots of these kinds of questions or comments all day. Uh, let's see who else we got all all evening. Uh, Chris Bullis is here. Vanessa Kitty is here as well. Shout out to them. Tango uh, Hunter also here. Let's see who else we get. Greg 98K and Imposter SoCal Gunner. Um, Henry 42. Let's see who else. David G, Armament and Axis. Um, then there's a uh, Ghetto Dr. Phil changed his thumbnail. I don't know why. What's up with that? Uh, I'm, I'm assuming Ghetto Dr. Phil is Ghetto Hood Gamer, but now he's Ghetto Dr. Phil. So I don't know. Could be wrong. I don't know. Uh, so let's see um, who else we got in here. I'm trying to go through this really, really, really fast and see. We got Rodney Breddy in here, the Archangel, Adam Brock. Let's see. Weston Probst, Strange Media Moderator, E Rock, Big Dick Willie, Big Dick Willie. Big Dick Willie says, Mo Guns, no problems. Mo Guns, no problems. Uh, I agree with that in, in some aspects. Unless unless you have HKs, then you probably got lots of problems. I don't know. I'm just making that up. Opt out of gun control is also here. James Miller. Let's see who else we got. Um, trying to go through William Hoffman, Brian Quick. So Brian Quick says, so I shouldn't have called that number on the bathroom stall wall for a good time at the truck stop. Spoiler alert, it was a tranny. <laughs> Laugh out loud. <laughs> see, where's the dang link at? Yeah. And it's like, sent it to the wrong address again. Yeah. Sicko316 says, notice how he had to resort to, quote, bathroom stall insult. Justin E says, present. <laughs> LB Louis Cipher is here. Um, did I say John Dieter? Okay. John Dieter, music lover. Charles Holschuth says, hey. And let's see who else we got. Moobutt. Moobutt is also in here. So I think that's it. If I miss someone, let me know. I can still, we could shout you out. Uh, we've got all, we've got two hours of this. We got two hours of this to go. I don't even know. 
where where we're gonna just start the craziness but we got two hours of craziness do you have some place you want to start man i think you were telling me that you had an opinion about the shopify's uh yeah the surefire x300 uas uh so they just released a thousand lumen version and i'm gonna roll back and grab it oh no you see you're okay you're talking about the surefire i thought the sh i said the shopify Oh yes, that, that too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. You said it all fancy like. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um. Yeah. No. So I, I kind of have a little bit of insight. So I, I got my start in the industry in e-commerce. Um. I worked for a couple different companies doing e-commerce stuffs. Uh, okay. Any? You know, can you mention the name of the companies or? Um. I'd rather not. Okay. Um. How do you think he will get to that in a minute? Uh, so just to kind of give you guys a, a, a better idea as to what, what's going on with the Shopify thing. Um, Shopify isn't like Amazon, it, and it's not quite like most other e-commerce solutions. So when you're building a website, we'll call, uh, say, for example, uh, Brown Owls or um, Big Daddy Unlimited. Uh, I think Big Daddy Unlimited uses the big cartel engine. Uh, Brown Owls uses uh, their own um, I know like Cheaper Than Dirt uses Kibo, um, you know, and, th and these are all things that uh, you can build a store with. It, it helps manage inventory, manages payment processing, order fulfillment, um, you know, order history, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's what Shopify is. It's not like a marketplace like many people are thinking it is, uh, and it's not a true standalone e-commerce solution either. So Shopify is kind of... Um, I think they use. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I think they use Big Commerce because I mix it yeah. up with Big. It's Big Cartel, right. I think. Because Big Cartel, I think. Yeah, yeah. It okay. Is. All right. Um, yeah. Opt out of gun control. Uh, yes, I did work for Cheaper Than Dirt. I started in their call center. That was my first job in the industry. How's it going, Richard? You have five minutes. Uh oh. What? Okay, Richard is here to complain about something. <laughs> five minutes. I, I'm oh. starting the clock. Uh oh. Okay. What are you uh -oh. here? What are you here well, to go to go at uh, Patrick about? So I'm claiming he's a half wit Robertson. Now Tyvin's maybe a three quarter wit Robertson, but he's a half wit Robertson. Oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. And please make your case, sir. I racked my gun. Uh, okay. That looked like a LC nine S, maybe. Whoa! Definitely with a laser. Yeah. Did yeah, he get yeah. any extra wits? Did his wit count go up or not? <laughs> he, his wit count went up like one tenth, one point there. <laughs> wow. Def Def fair, fair. No, um, yeah, it's a great little blaster. A lot of guys really love the LC9S. It uh, looks like he had a Crimson Trace laser guard or a laser. No, it's Crimson Trace, isn't it? Yep. Good choice. Good choice. That's uh, probably one of the best lasers out there you can put on a gun. Yeah, I, the only reason I use the laser on this is uh, the Uncle Mike's holster that I have. It would go through and it would catch on the sight, so I wouldn't be able to draw it. So that's the gotcha. only reason I threw the laser on. Yeah, I actually, um, the gun that my wife generally carries, we did a Laser Guard Pro on that from Optics Planet. And uh, so we can see that there. So she does an MMP shield with uh, that badass nice. green laser and a light on there, which is really great. Um, one of the things I really like about lasers is uh, you don't really have to spend time, you know, spend time learning how to align the sights properly. So she doesn't shoot real often. I just tell her when I go out of town, it's like, here you go. Put the dot on the <laughs> on the bad guy, pull the trigger till bad guy stops, call 911. Yep. Uh, I don't. I, I I hate to interrupt this love fest, but I thought we were having fun. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I I, 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 I thought I was going to have yeah. to defend myself. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I want to see the freaking sparks fly. <laughs> so what's going? On? <laughs> uh, what's what's going on, Richard? What's your what's your beef with the with the Roberts? Uh, you know, I wish they could just get along. Oh, okay. So you're here to talk about the uh, Tyven versus Patrick R. <laughs> yes scenario or debacle or kerfuffle <laughs> Fair. <laughs> the, the kerfuffle um i like i said i don't have any issue with ivan personally um i i 
take issue with bad information being put out. That's something what's I'm the, real, real What's the bad about. information hey. that, that you took? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, just, just because nine millimeter Glocks aren't EMP proof, and Tyvan knows why, and you disagree. No, no, no. Tyvan can't show me proof of his reasoning beyond this is what I think, or I heard it somewhere. Um, <laughs> like that. That that that's that's where where my my issue lies it is it, not not just the nine millimeter Glock thing, but like um, many of the things that the, that he has said on air either don't hold water or can't be backed up, and like I have a fundamental issue with that because like people turn to guys like Hank, um, you know, so like the publications that I contribute to, they they turn to those to learn. And when you're putting poor information out there without anything to back up your, you know, theory that you fucking microwaves are going to disintegrate all Glocks in two years. <laughs> no, no, time. you got to put them in the microwave that shields them from the EMP. Oh, fair. Alex Jones um, told me that. <laughs> but like that is my my, my biggest gripe. Um, it, it, like continuing to propagate that, you know, misinformation is just so angering you know it, it's like against everything that i do everything yeah. i believe in so let's get so let's just give people some information um i think that the, both of you were on on the same show and we were talking about glocks and i'm probably misquoting tyvin and of course tyvin can come on and talk about this he's welcome to do it but tyvin said that that um he doesn't trust polymer pistols right and then specifically he says he knows something about glocks that they um that that what was it was it that the russians were experimenting it, it with some way of, no, of affecting something about when the m16s like i went back and i watched it again because it was so really ridiculous i couldn't remember all of the details uh something about uh they were they were uh whenever the m16 was adopted they were doing some testing on it and right. as part of that emps were set off in the vicinity of an m16 and uh, the plastic degraded on it in, in like, you know, th I think the first answer was three months and then it went to six months. And like, I tried to, 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 to lead him to, you know, <laughs> the, the conclusion that maybe that's not accurate because the M16 didn't originally have plastic furniture. It just appeared to be plastic. Um, and then when they did switch to something that was plastic E, uh, it was, it was a glass filled polymer and, like, yeah. you know, like chemical resistant. So, so uh, I mean, my yeah. thing about that is there's different kinds of polymers. There's different formulas, combinations, etc. I'm not sure how that leads back to Glock, but I know that became like a whole thing. So, yeah, uh, he, he, he said something about they put iron filings in the polymer or something and that acted like a microwave. I, and it, it, it was it was so ridiculous that it was hard to follow. Yeah. So here's my thing about it. I mean, obviously, Tyvin's not here. Tyvin can uh, can fend for himself if he, if he would like to. So the thing is, is that, so obviously, Patrick, you disagree. Richard, do you agree with uh, Tyvin or do you disagree? Uh, I just want to get on the show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but if Tyvin said it, he's the military guy. He should know, right? Mm. Listen, I don't think I don't think all knowledge is available to everyone. So it's it's like a weird kind of thing. I uh, and I'm not saying that because I, I don't agree. I do not agree with it. Um, but maybe Tyvin knows something that we don't know. He can enlighten all of us. Maybe there's some way to put this to the test or whatever it is and, and bring truth to the people. I think it, I think Patrick has a point that, you know, there are people who are looking to us to to, to get some kind of advice maybe and lead them somewhere. Definitely do your own research. Don't be dogmatic to anyone out there. That's That would be my advice to people. And no, I mean, I, there, there are resources out there that are um, really reputable. And like, I, I don't have a problem going to that one particular source and seeing what they say about a particular topic because I know that they are a subject matter expert. Like I've got friends in the industry that I'll call and I'll say, hey man, like, can you explain this thing to me? And whatever they happen to tell me, like, even when I go and I check out what they've got to say is 100% spot on. So there are dudes out there that can be trusted at face value. Um, 
but if it sounds like it might be hogwash or if it sounds questionable then yes absolutely look into it further yeah yeah and we have ways of of we have ways of finding out we have ways of finding out okay are you done with your uh five minutes of fame richard uh yes i am and we're just wondering how long it was going to take for patrick to rack the slide on a gun oh yes. yeah no no I, I just haven't i haven't gotten to it yet yeah <laughs> yeah, do you have a bet or something? Well, okay. Oh, we did. Bet. Oh, you did. Oh, so that's why you triggered him? Yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could see that this is going to go way off the rails tonight. <laughs> yeah, you know, and that makes it fun, though. Yeah, and uh, who is it? Moobot wants to know where's your co pilot? Where's Pebbles? Oh, hey, well, I, I'm in Orlando. Pebbles is in uh, Jupiter, Florida. All right, there you go. So I'm going back to Jupiter tomorrow and opt out of gun control, and I are going to do some badassery at the range. Awesome. Right awesome. Very cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right. Okay. Any I'm other out. things before you get out of here? <laughs> I'm out. Later. All right. Peace, man. Later. There you go. Okay. Yeah, this is going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be fun. So you were talking, you were talking about um, – you were talking about this whole thing with Shopify, which there was an article yes. that came out in Recoil Magazine today about Shopify. The headline, Shopify's new anti-gun policy bans sales of certain firearms and accessories, and they've got like a pouty face. Yeah, if you want to keep reading. On yeah, the, with on Toby the, Luki. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to I'm not gonna read the whole thing. We, talk, we talked no, about I, this, but I know you have an opinion. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, no. Well, that, 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 is, my, you know, that, that is my post. Um, and like oh like, oh i didn't even realize that oh yeah they said there's the name right below the title yeah oh that's why you want me to keep reading yeah i usually yeah. know those bylines <laughs> jerk jerk um, <laughs> so you definitely have an opinion on this yeah yeah no i do um so like i was trying to explain earlier uh shopify is just it's an engine that you use to create a site so um they make it really easy with their user interface on the back end um all right Hatchy Zinke, the dude got fired that spoke ill of the MP7 like three, four years ago. One dude speaking out about something stupid doesn't make the whole group bad. Um, anyhow, the that's, uh, a, that's a recoil comment. Yeah, right? yeah, man. Like, and and the dudes that run it now are phenomenal people. Um, the guy that made some stupid uh, comments back in the day has been let go. Like he hasn't worked for them in. I, I mean, I don't know, since like, you know, issue three, issue four. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of magazines and I don't like follow any of the gun magazines out there. But I, I would acknowledge that Recoil is probably considered like amongst gun guys as uh, probably the, the better gun oriented magazine out there. Um, and obviously I, I, I know someone who writes for it, so. And I think I've met. A, I know a couple of other guys that probably yeah, contribute yeah. articles. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, I, and I've never contributed anything beyond the web stuff. But yeah, um, you should do an article on um, black gun guys that have mohawks. I mean, because no one is I, fucking I, covering that. No one is covering that. I'm, I, <laughs> I feel like there are a couple of very specific channels that do cover <laughs> black mohawk gun guys. Um, anyway, so. Shopify just had a really use, easy to use in, uh, interface, which lent itself to being used by a lot of small businesses. Now, this is where um, the Shopify thing gets really interesting. So if you take a look at the people that uh, are affected, and I put together a short list. I kind of got on the web and went to like 40 or 50 different uh, e-commerce sites. Yeah, uh, and that's the down community. at the bottom of that article. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, there's there's a plugin you can uh, set up for uh, Chrome called Wapalizer. It'll tell you what somebody's running. Um, so Spikes Tactical, Franklin Armory, Southern Guns, Harry's Holsters. I know he's not affected by it, but uh, he did say that he will be changing over. Uh, JSD Supply, Alamo Precision Rifles, Cobra Tac, Big Tech Outdoors, Black Rifle Depot, 22 Mods for All. Veritas Tactical, Rare Breed Firearms, Air 15, uh, Air 15 Discounts.com. All of these guys are going to have to either, you know, with the exception of Harry's Holsters, because his uh, move to a new platform is his choice, and it's probably the right call. But the rest of them all sell something that falls under these new this new acceptable use policy, which... Um, so so Holsters is okay according to their new policy? Yeah, so... in. Okay. in and I don't know if you guys have gotten into the the new definitions of restricted items. 
Have you done that yet? Um, we read off. We read them off a little bit, but no. Hit us with it. What? What? Yeah. Are they um, so certain firearms, uh, an automatic firearm that has not been rendered inoperable, so something that hasn't been um, deactivated for collector uh, use. So, like in England, you can own a machine gun as long as it's been deactivated by um, a place that does deactivations of live firearms. Yeah, that's sacrilege. Anyone who does that it, does not. Deserve yeah. to be on the face of the planet Earth. Well, I mean, or any other planet. So, yes, and I know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just giving my two cents. The, well, you got to keep in mind, man. Like, there is no if they don't deactivate it, it has to be destroyed or turned yeah. over. To the, you know, turned over to the government. You know. Yeah. Um. So, a semi-automatic firearm that has the capacity to accept a detachable magazine with uh, one or more of the following items: a magazine uh, capable of accepting more than ten rounds. So, anything that has an AR mag, well. Um, or has a magazine base plate out there, like, and this includes, say, like something that would take, like, um, yeah, it, well, pretty, pretty much any magazine, really, because there's high cap uh, versions of mm -hmm. just about everything out there to include, like, LCP mags, uh, a bump stock, rapid fire trigger activator or trigger trigger crank. Uh, barrel shroud, thumb hole stock, which apparently makes things more lethal. Throated barrel capable of accepting a flash suppressor, sound suppressor, or silencer. A uh, grenade or rocket launcher, flash suppressor, sound suppressor, or silencer. Pistol grip, uh, forward pistol grip. Um, they also state they <laughs> semi-automatic. I mean, this is covering a lot of stuff. Yeah, well, um, I mean, pretty pretty much anything that is semi-automatic, uh, and and like it. it <laughs> insanely like a box stock 1022 falls under a restricted firearm uh with their definitions because it doesn't define uh, center fire versus rim fire um then you've got a semiotic fire uh firearm that has a fixed magazine with capacity except more than 10 rounds um so if you have one of those ridiculous bin laden mags stuffed into your sks just because you can't take it out it's also you know like a prohibited thing under Shopify's terms, firearms with uh, firearms without serial numbers, which don't exist, um, in, in terms of like retailers legally selling, which which is insane. Uh, ghost guns and 3D printed guns, and guns including blueprints for such guns. So all of those are banned by the terms of service. Any part, component, or kit uh, for any firearm or gust gun listed above. So if you have an AR kit, you can no longer sell AR kits through Shopify. Uh, certain firearm parts like 80% uh, or unfinished lower receivers, magazine capable of accepting more than 10 rounds, bump stock, grenade launcher, or rocket launcher. <laughs> um, yeah. Pistol, pistol grip. I mean, th th this is like these guys made up their own rules. I was reading an article where basically they said that since no one else is doing anything about it or not doing things fast enough, they they are going to activate and yeah. do something about it and that's what's we've got like a, a a transplanted to to Canada German snowflake here that's deciding he's going to do something about guns right right yeah uh, Toby Lucky um so he founded Shopify back in 2004 and yes it is a, a Canadian company they're out of Ottawa um you know and really there is nothing that we can do um Everybody months ago was not demanding that that dude bake a cake for that gay couple. And now we're demanding that services like Shopify be regulated to force them to allow legal sales. And that's just not how, how it works. You can't, you can't pick and choose what the government starts regulating the piss out of. It's like once you start yeah. going down that slope, it, 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 it's all over. Yeah, I think a lot of people would agree with you on that. I mean, even that guy, the the baking the cake guys back in the news, because I believe that um, someone transgender tried to come in and get a cake and it became a thing. So now he's suing again over that. And and I think most of us here would support his thing. But yeah, the flip side of that is these private corporations have the right to do what they want. Um, and I know Len Holt, I'm just trying to give you this quick comment from from the chat. Len Holt says, why do U.S.-based companies use foreign companies to aid in running their businesses? Uh, question mark, question mark. Globalization, question mark. Internet is everywhere in free countries. So, I, you know, that's so, just, I think that's part of the whole convo. Yeah, I mean, it, realistically, um, 
<laughs> I'm willing to bet a lot of these people didn't really look into Shopify before they set up their stores. I mean, in as little as a, like a year and year and a half ago now, um, Toby Lucky posted something on a, on a um, on Medium, I think it was. He said that he was against exclusion of any kind, whether that's restraining uh, restricting people from Muslim majority nations from entering the U.S. or kicking merchants off our platform if they're operating within the law. So he said he wasn't going to do it. He was against that a year and a, a year and a half ago. Um, but he's since reversed his position. So like, even if they had looked into it and they're like, oh, okay, they're based out of Canada, but this dude says that he's totally cool with people acting within the law. Um, <laughs> a year and a half later, they can change their mind entirely. Mm -hmm. um, so the downside is it's like, I, I see a lot of people saying, I'm never going to uh, patronize another place on Shopify. Uh, keep in mind, you, you will absolutely put guys like Blue Alpha Gear out of business if you decide to vote with your wallet just because they couldn't afford a more expensive e-commerce platform. Like you will absolutely destroy businesses. So what's the options here? Um, you know, I think there are options. So it, recommend it, ask companies that are using the Shopify uh, Shopify platform to look at other avenues of selling their stuff on the internet. Um, <clears throat> So, I mean, like, absolutely, if you have a, a, a trainer friend, holster maker, belt maker, somebody who relies on the gun industry for sales, ask that they move away from the Shopify platform when they can. Because developing an e-commerce e store, this isn't like setting your Facebook page up. This is something that, um, Christ, armaments and access, okay, let's... I worked for Cheaper Than Dirt. That was my first job in the industry. I worked in the call center. I had no direct control over anything. I started working with them after all of that nonsense with the price ridiculousness and dumbassery by some of the higher ups within that company. Um, when I left the tech uh, team, so the guys you call and say, hey, does this fit my gun? Uh, when I left that part of the company, I went over to the marketing side and was working as an seo copywriter so i never had anything to do with any of that shit so if we can put that to bed please that'd be great yeah. um, do you think is someone holding it against you because you worked for cheaper than dirt i, I, mean, I think people are idiots i think that <laughs> if we're, if we're gonna no, get i think I, I don't know i mean i think from armament and axis point of view maybe he just wants to know but i don't think um unless you work no, for it's, cheaper it's, than it's, dirt it's, and you made that decision, I wouldn't necessarily hold it against you. If you're just an employee there and they did that, you know, I'm not a fan of Cheaper Than Dirt. I don't know if you are. No, I, 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 I've got no love for them. Um, yeah. You know, it, like, I, I really don't have any uh, love for them at all. Like, I learned a lot while I worked there. They are some great people that work for that company. Um, and, you know, just like anybody else, like, you know, I'm, I'm they're sure. based in, are they based in Texas? I'm yeah, assuming. they're right here in Fort Worth. Um, they're, okay. they're, I, I'd say a solid quarter of the people in our chat tonight probably hate their jobs or do stuff that they don't agree with to make sure that they can pay their bills. Um, there are a lot of people that do that within the industry. Yeah, it's a tough thing. It's a tough thing uh, when you work for other people. It's tough when you work for yourself. It's tough. So yeah, um, yeah. So yeah. Um, but uh, getting getting back to like uh, what we should probably do about the Shopify thing, um, if you know of a retailer like Harry's Holsters, ask them as soon as you're able to, can you please move to a more friendly platform? Now, like I was trying to explain, this is not a cheap endeavor. This isn't like setting a Facebook page up. Um, a low end store uh, it can it can cost somebody upwards of ten thousand dollars to develop out, um, like. Spikes Tactical, they are $100,000 deep in their store. There are other ones that are uh, not large companies that have thirty dollars or $40,000 in development costs mm -hmm. to get that Shopify store up. Now, yeah. keep in mind, Shopify is a cheaper option than a yeah. lot of other e-commerce platforms. Yeah, Now, and I, and I know because I spoke to them. They're not on your list. But they do sponsor me, so I'm going to mention them every chance I get. They sponsor me with ammo, which is a good thing for, for a gun guy. Fort Scott Munitions, um, they spend a lot of money as well getting that Shopify thing. And they're, and they're out there right now fixing that. 
I think the options that I saw that a lot of people are looking at are big commerce and Wix. All of that stuff's going to cost money. So these, a lot of these companies are going to wind up paying this money twice. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, on, on top of that, um, you, you, you got to take into account there's going to be downtime. This is going to put some companies out of business. Like um, Big Tech's Outdoors, dude is awesome. Ike is phenom a phenomenal guy, uh, my, and I've, I've spent a bunch of money with him over the years. And it's going to hurt him bad. Like he and his wife run an e-commerce store and sell stuff to, um, you know, like cops and professionals and things like that. And mm -hmm. he doesn't have the revenue stream to toss another 30 grand at building out an e-commerce site. Um, yeah. So it's going to hurt him a lot. It's going to hurt a lot of people a lot. Uh, it's going to hurt us as consumers because all of those uh, companies are going to have to defer that cost somewhere. They're going to have to make up that money that they lost moving from Shopify to whatever platform they decide to go to. And it can cost, you know, I mean, like I said, it, this can be the cost of a new car yeah. uh, for a low end site. Uh, something, you know, it, like if you go to Alamo Precision Rifles site, like I would, I would estimate that that's probably in the, the $20,000 range, um, you know, or something more complex like spikes, you know, like, that that is the cost of a house in some areas of this country. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, like you said, they said they spent a hundred thousand. Okay, you and I were on the convoy across America with Brownell. So was Tactical yes. Two Box. Yes. So, and he, I see he's in the chat. He says also Woo Commerce. Tactical Two Box is a very knowledgeable yeah. dude. He is. Um, he's a smart guy. Yeah, he's so he's telling us WooCommerce is an alternative out there. You know, I need to get Tactical Toolbox box to bring his butt. Back on the show here, yeah, dude, uh, jump on now. Yeah, I don't know if you, I don't know don't if he's going to be Jonathan. able to. Uh, he's he's probably doing several things here at the same time, but we're we're trying to get him to come back on. Um, so yeah, man, this is a tough situation all around. Uh, I think ultimately, what we need to try to do is for everything that we need to do to exist, we need to start creating alternatives, and then we also need to start supporting those alternatives. So I've got. Um, now, when it comes to e-commerce, like, you know, yes, creating a alternative is not going to be as hard. Uh, but this is something you know, I see thrown around, around a lot. Like uh, early on, whatever the demonetization thing happened on YouTube, you saw a lot of people screaming, just go to vid.me. Just go to vid.me. That, that was the, the go-to answer for people who were too fucking lazy to do something about it. Uh, who are too lazy to write an email to YouTube, say, look, this is uncool, or who were too cheap to toss a couple dollars at their favorite channels to keep their costs uh, manageable. Mm -hmm. um, we Far too often, we jump to this answer that we need to move to another platform. We need our own thing. And the sad reality of it is, it's like when it comes to Amazon, eBay, YouTube, Facebook, all of these things, all of these companies are um, reasonably anti-gun. Um, yeah, and I feel like I can safely say they're pretty anti-gun. Um, the problem is that's where the eyeballs are. That's where people will go, and people like they they won't click a link in your description. They, like people are inherently lazy when it comes to consuming content. And, and I, and I say that with the most amount of love I possibly can, um, getting someone to transition from watching a video to clicking a link in your description to purchase that box of toilet paper, they're going to buy anyway from Amazon and ensure that translates to an affiliate sale is like pulling teeth. Getting someone to click a link in your description of your video to go to a Facebook page and hit like, is like pulling teeth. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. It, it's it takes, not easy. You're going to yeah. get a very small percentage of whatever um, audience that you have, without a doubt. So now, now that we have that like as an established thing, right? Take this into context. How many people, if if everybody that did gun stuff on YouTube disappeared tomorrow, just like gone? How many people would head on over to full thirty? My guess is it's going to be about fifteen percent. Yeah, um, it'll be a cultural shift that we just can't fix. So instead of just giving up and running off to a new thing, saying, "Hey, let's go build our own clubhouse, guys. Let's fix fix the stuff that we have now. Try to get companies to work with the Second Amendment, uh, you know, centric companies, to where like we we can we can all like coexist. Because the second yeah. that we let them take their giant platform and say, "Hey, you guys aren't allowed in our club anymore," like we are going 
to lose so much. So, so here's my thing about that, man. I, I think that that's a noble, uh, noble ideal that you have there. I think we've all tried that. You know, I'm still on YouTube. I still create content. It goes up on YouTube. That's where it goes typically first and all that kind of stuff. I've actually talked to people at YouTube, met with people at YouTube, gone to things. And, and in my opinion, I wouldn't leave YouTube. They're going to have to take me, pull me out of there, drag, you know, drag me out screaming and fighting, clawing right, right. my way out. But what I would do, though, is is leverage YouTube and other social media to build something else, because I okay. don't. These guys are not on our side, man. If you listen to what, um, what what the guy from Shopify said and how these people think, I've been trying to tell people for a while, and I'm not the only one, that these people in social media, they are going to use the powers that they have. It's almost like some Illuminati type shit. They've, they've been saying this for a long time, that they're going to fix this problem. They're not going to sit around and wait for the government. I think it's too late for us to ever win them back over to our side, what we could do is just use them to 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 support somewhere else that we know ultimately is uh, is pro gun. But those people also need to be. It, there's so many moving parts here. That's the tough thing about it. You need the audience. You need the content creators. You need the platform. You need good business people at the platform. You need advertisers, the industry to come in and advertise on the platform. You need the, the, the folks that own the platform to develop it and find alternatives. If they're not getting the industry to come in uh, and advertise and all of that kind of stuff needs to, to be in place. No, I agree. Um, it, it's definitely a complicated math problem. And I mean, just the, the, the sad reality that I've kind of come to realize is the moment that we are pulled from YouTube, the moment that we're pulled entirely from like Amazon and uh, other major platforms, like the second that Facebook says, you know what, no more gun talk anymore. Um, that is the moment that we will lose our rights. Like there, there is no recovering from that. Um, if we become the black sheep in the eyes of whoever, that's the moment that we're going to lose everything. Yeah, and that's that moment's coming. I mean, Alex Jones might be the poster child or ground zero for being deplatformed, but it's just the beginning. I mean, I think the other day, um, yesterday, I think, Twitter put him on timeout because they said he incited violence. These guys could just keep making up the rules, and this is going to happen. And then you're going to see people get deplatformed in waves and all of that. So at some point, we have to do something about it. I just don't think that the that we're going to convince them to come over to our side in any way. So um, I don't want to, uh, I don't want, I, I see you're sh throwing up flashlights there. Yeah. So no, I wanna, just them. <laughs> yeah. You want to, you, you want to get into some accessory talk, man, we could do that. No, 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 no. Um, it, I mean, if anybody has any uh, other, like, I mean, want any more comments, questions about the Shopify thing? Like, I, I mean, I think it's, it, getting down to like what my opinion is on the matter. Like, I think it's their right as a company to decide what they want to allow on their platform or not. Like we live in a, you know, a free society. They have the right as, you know, the, 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 the service provider to say, yeah, we want to allow that in our clubhouse or no, we don't want to allow that in our clubhouse. Um, you know, just like that dude had every right to say, no, I'm not going to bake you a cake. Yeah. Uh, so it was their right to make that move. Um, that said, I'm really disappointed to see um, yet another company <laughs> using their influence to shape public opinion. Um, just because what they feel, whatever their feelings are on the subject doesn't make them right. And the fact that they are utilizing, uh, essentially holding people at gunpoint Mm -hmm. uh, to, to toe the line like that. Yeah. That's not okay. JB says it's not all guns, pro wrestling and gaming channels. I know over 30 channels in the last 10 days that got, uh, uh, I'm assuming can canceled. canceled, canceled on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. It comes down to affiliations and, and a bunch of other things. And I could tell you something. I think we've already lost the battle with YouTube because I know on my small channel, I've got like 67,000 followers and I post a video there and it I'll be lucky if that video gets 2000 views. All right. So I, I actually, I was thinking about that. Um, I was looking at the, the numbers on a lot of other channels. 
So engagement rates have everything to do with how old the, uh, that, that particular subscriber is. So you might have 67,000 subscribers. We'll call it 100K for the sake of conversation, right? Say, for example, um, half of those subscribers, half that 100,000 is over like four years old, right? Uh, in that four years, you may have had people set up new accounts and just never resubscribe or they subscribe twice or whatever. Uh, yeah. Whenever you're looking at subs, uh, it's like total subs, it's really a, a, like a, a meaningless number. Yeah, but um, YouTube has been weeding those out. And I think we've all never, ex like I've never expected to, to have that number and put up a video and have um, all those people look at a video. Sometimes I have way over those people like... Uh, you know, a couple hundred multiple, whatever my following is, I think that uh, people, the accepted rate is about like 10%. That's what it's been. Yeah, about 10% so, sounds about right. Yeah, so if you have 100,000 followers, you put up a video within a week or so, you should at least have like about 10,000 views, you know, unless um, something's really going wrong. And I know that it's not like, my numbers are still growing and I put up videos that do, you know, some of those videos do well for lots of different reasons, but for the most part, I think that a lot of those videos are just being sectioned off by YouTube and not everyone's getting access to them. I, I don't think they're being sectioned off. Sorry, I got to get something out of the garage. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they're, they're, they're being sectioned off for quarantine or anything like that. I think that people are just scrolling past stuff that they don't find interesting and that 10% that click through rate is about, it's about right. You're right. Um, yeah, it, it just the, is the way it is. It seems like we're being penalized. Our videos aren't being served up on homepage like they used to be. That's kind of like YouTube wide. The algorithms changed and like a lot of us do a really terrible job of, um, uh, like learning how to use the algorithm to our advantage. Uh, Jonathan, the tactical toolbox has got that stuff on lock. Like he understands yeah. that. But And so well. here's the thing, like we do all of those things and I would be the first to confess to you that I'm not, that we're not as good as Jonathan doing it, but we do all of those things and it's still, you know, including sharing and I've got social media and all that. So I think, you know, and, and by the way, we've got like the guy from Gunstreamer, I see him in the chat. And when you look at Gunstreamer or YouTube and, vi and our videos go on there because I've been putting my videos on both of those platforms. Yeah, that's not what I see over there. I know I, I know that there, that people think there's issues there because okay, it's just a, these are just gun things. I think both of those platforms want to do more than just guns and they have more than just guns, but I see a, a, a difference over there. The only drawback right now is there's not a ton of monetization over there, but we are already losing on YouTube. We might as well invest in something else now because this is like a no-win situation. Dude, I mean, like explosive growth with channels like Grand Thumb and Tactical Toolbox. Like he, he's been blowing up lately too. Paul mm -hmm. Harrell, uh, you know, T Rex Arms. Like I, I don't necessarily agree with um, you know, the message that all of these guys have when they, you know, with whatever content they put out. Mm -hmm. um, but like seeing gun channels explode in growth, like they're, they're getting ridiculous view numbers for the subscriber base they've got and they're growing in subs at a rate that I didn't think was possible in the gun industry. Um, it, it tells me that, that we're just not, we like a lot of us just haven't figured it out. Like I know I haven't figured it out. Um, I think that's always, I think that's always a part of it. That's always some part of it. And I think ultimately the audience makes a choice but I think there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. Definitely a lot of things have changed, you know, um, and those uh, people like I know Jonathan, um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say I know him like the best bud or whatever, but I know Jonathan's a very smart guy. He He's basically like Neo out of the freaking Matrix. <laughs> and uh, he can see a lot of uh, of what's going on with he, the algorithm. Yeah, he spent a lot of time learning how the uh, the uh, the algorithm works, man. Like, uh, I, I spent some time with him when I was driving back home on from the convoy. Uh, I stopped at Phoenix and hung out with him for a few hours, and we went over like a lot of really high level, like how how he sets his stuff up and how he keywords it and how he tags his videos and like title structure and you know the video structure and all of that stuff. Um, so like. There are things that you can do to game the system to, to work in your favor. 
a lot of us gun guys aren't willing to put the time in to so, learn how that and, and here's works. the thing I have to say to you because I do I really really do honestly think Jonathan is amazing but when we talk to him he still says that that doesn't make a huge difference on its own in terms of revenue and stuff like that uh, so he's he's obviously doing other things to survive we all have to like we all have to pay the bills and stuff I think we really just need to look, I'm not trying to say things should be easier. We, you should, you're, you're always going to have to work hard and innovate and, and change and adapt and all that kind of stuff. But I think that we're kind of, you know, we're, we're still finding a losing battle here with YouTube because no matter, look, if, if this, if this CEO is saying that they, that yes, we don't care what the laws are. We're going to make these rules and we're going to affect what's happening even in another country, even because they're in Canada and they're going like, no, fuck it. We're going to we're going to affect what's happening in America because we have the power to do it. What, what do you think YouTube's doing or Facebook is doing or Instagram is going to do, even though Instagram is probably a pretty big place for gun guys right now? There's going to be more of this coming down and either you sit around and you wait for it to uh to wash over you and destroy you, or you start looking for alternatives way before that happens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like I've divers diversified my content. I've got everything on GunStreamer. I've got everything on YouTube. Um, I've got everything on, uh, you know, Full Thirty. Uh, you know, like I just make it live at different times. Mm -hmm. uh, YouTube always takes precedence, just because that's where the eyeballs are. Yeah, but, for now. Know, for now. And I, and I agree with you. I know what you said earlier that, hey, it's it's really difficult. Maybe that's where we need to try to innovate because, you know, it's we're a couple of clicks away from from changing that scenario. But we've got to do things to convince people to uh, to to look up the alternatives and stuff like that. Uh, so, you know what? Let's uh, let's let's pivot this, a little bit. Yes. This has gotten far too serious. And yes. I'm now upset. <laughs> I need a drink. <laughs> Let's pivot a little bit. Listen, I do. I want to. Uh, I want to talk about the bags. So you want to do that? Yes. Let's talk yeah. about your 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 ball sacks. Yeah. So yes, I'm going to talk about these bags, which have my balls. My balls are in these bags, and we're going to talk about that. And there's a there's a video that Lola and I did a review um, from Expedition, and the new. This is the Rift Point. Okay. So if you've heard of Rift Core, the Rift Core. From Expedition, this is kind of like a, a little bit smaller. I think that's a 23 liter, and this is a 15. People wanted like a smaller, um, they wanted a smaller bag, but still with the CCW pouch, which this has here, right? And so that's where this came in. Expedition, you know, spends time researching to see what uh, folks want out there. So we have a video, it's on the Hank Strange on YouTube channel. You guys can go over there. I encourage you to go over there and look at it and like, share, comment, and all that, because I think I'm gonna go through this Iraq veteran man can that came to me, and I might give stuff, you know, Patrick and I are gonna actually go over there just now and look at that video, and we're gonna pick out comments, and maybe, first we'll open this, and then maybe we'll give away some, I'm not giving away everything, because I think I think there's something really cool in here I might not wanna give away, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. I've never, I've never gotten one of those. I've never. So one of the things people always ask me is, uh, I started this whole thing with the balls. I think I told you about that, right? Do you know about the legend of the balls? No, no, no. You don't know. You never heard about my balls. Uh... <laughs> you want to talk about something else? Okay. So here's the thing. I feel uncomfortable. These are. <laughs> where did the bad man touch you, <laughs> Patrick? Where did... So look. These are play balls that you would put in like a, you know, the, the, that little, what is that thing where you take your kids to Chuck E. Cheese? A uh, ball pit. A ball pit. So there you go. So these are the, these are the things. And I thought this would be a good standard. You can get these on Amazon, by the way. So um, I thought this would be a good standard for people to know. Obviously, we know this is a 15 liter. We want to see how many balls we can get in there. So this is actually stuffed with balls. So uh, there you go. Look, you, you, don't you, you, would, you would be wrong if yeah. you uh, assume it's a Glock. Yeah. So there you go. That's a Smith and Wesson. So this what? is stuff with no. balls. If you, if you, is it not? Oh, FN, FN, FN. Yeah. Sorry. There you go. Yeah. So I'm not as fast on picking out guns as you are. So this basically has. Um, I think this has this. This held 76 balls, which are now all over the studio floor, and I don't even have assistance to help me clean it up. 
So there you go. So that's the that's the rift point, the smaller one. And this is actually bigger than the rift core. This is called the rift blade. And um, it's uh, 30 liters. The 30 liter bag also, of course, has, you know, the CCW pocket there. And uh, this one also has a bunch of balls stuffed in there, as you guys can see. I don't think I'm going to pour these all out because Lola, I don't even know. Lola probably won't even help me with my balls later and help me. I really don't think that I blame her. Yeah. So <laughs> this has, um, I don't know. Lola has the number. I think this has like, uh, Lola, what was the number on this one? I don't know. She knows what the number is. This was like, I want to say this was like maybe a hundred and or so like a hundred balls or something like that in here. So, you know, you guys can go see a more detailed video of that. Like I said, over on Hank Strange on YouTube, make sure you like it, make sure you share it, make sure you comment because Patrick and I are going to go over there in a few minutes and check it out. So there you go. What did, what did you think about my balls and my bags? I, I was preoccupied by... Uh, you were trying not to look at the balls? Uh, yeah. I mean, strange as it might sound. Yeah. I, I did, Patrick told me to do that. Patrick no. I to do that because I was listening as Patrick uh -huh. was shaking his head. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many How many went into this one? This was 10, I think it was 102 plus 20 more. It's about 1.2, 122. Yeah. So that's a lot. That's a lot of those. It so seems 100. like more balls than any one man needs. Yeah. I mean, how, you know. <laughs> 122 of these up in a bag. That's pretty good. Right, right. <laughs> this has gotten really weird. Yeah, it's a tradition. So we have to do it. It's a tradition around here. So we have to do it. Okay. <laughs> so I talked about the bags. We're going to go over and do that thing. I know you have something that you've been reviewing. So yeah. do, you want to, do you want to talk about that before we go over and check? Uh, what are you no, up to? no, no. Yeah, right now I'm changing uh, the battery on an RMR to a battery yeah. that's the right dimension. Yeah, hey, as usual, can you hold up that uh, FN? So In this is a moment. Yeah, this should be called Patrick Robertalizing or Patrickalizing a gun. I, no, no, you dude. put every freaking thing you can put on no, there possibly. No. Uh, no, this uh, this has a red dot, which it comes factory milled for, and it has a flashlight, which is required for my holster. Oh, you so, took? Did you take? Because I think I shot this right. We you, you did. You did. Um, yeah, I took the comp off because uh, it was too wide to fit into the holster. But uh, yeah, that is the FN five hundred nine tactical. So mm -hmm. right now I'm just running it with the thread protector installed and an RMO one on here because my Type two RMO six is at Trujikine getting fixed. The little emitter lens fell out at some point. And I've got the new hotness, the 1000 Lumen Surefire X300UA here. So Very nice. Whoa. 1000 Lumens, that is the 600. Uh, yeah, so what's the highest Lumens that these things have had before, man? Is, is this are these the first guy? And then mm -hmm. you got 1000, so you can kind of tell a difference there. Yeah, wow. Um, Amazing. And by yeah. the way, Big Daddy Unlimited has these very same things we were talking about it last night there's a link in the description big daddy unlimited is 99 cents for the first month and you can save 100 walter bucks on these if there's any left so you can also check out like uh my hank strange on facebook thing if you guys want to so, i'm gonna assume that you you bought this yourself the they, gun or no, the, light? The, the light did they send it to you as a team no no, no I, I bought it from big techs actually um okay. Big Tex Outdoor got some in. Uh, I found out and placed an order because I wanted it on my gun. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, so somebody asked me what my favorite gun is, uh, and th this is going to be it right now. This thing is phenomenal. Uh, super reliable. It's got like the best serrations on the you know on the market from the factory, right out of the box. Um, great red dot mount on here. Great sights, really great barrel. <laughs> JB, JB says that's too much light. <laughs> I'm just laughing because I don't. JB, think need, no, JB, JB is giving me shit, and <laughs> JB needs to eat a dick. <laughs> there's, like, there's, there's never too much ammo. Too no, much, no, too that, much magazine capacity. Too J, much. JB light. knows damn well that there's <laughs> no such yeah. thing as you can't have too much horsepower. <laughs> 
He's just he's being, he's being a dick right now is what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> um, Harry's Holster says he ordered one last night. That's very cool. Nice. And, and, and shout out to Big Tech's Outdoors, right? Do you want to shout them out? Because that's where yeah, you got yeah, yours from. Yeah, Ike. Uh, definitely check out Ike over at Big Tech's Outdoors. Super awesome. Um, super awesome, dudes. Yeah. Do you uh, have like do you have like a discount code or anyone anything? No, no, okay. I don't. Um, you know, like they there are some discount codes out there. Um, and like I'm not gonna give out the ones that are like special um to mm -hmm. like, you know, alumni of classes and stuff like that. Um but yeah, they're super good people. Uh, I got a great deal on it. I forget I think it was like um two forty something, but you know super super great um anyway somebody asked me if i had a holster for the gun um and i do so here is my little shooty belt uh, situation yeah yeah so like I, i'm a big fan of like range uh belts you know whenever i go out to the range if i want to you know take off for lunch or something i want to just peel the belt off and go to lunch come back put it on yeah uh jb seriously bro <laughs> I'm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he says he had an x 300u <laughs> for a while but sent it back it was just too much light whatever uh <laughs> you hurt my by the soul, way dude. by the way you said you were on gun streamer right yes yeah I am. yeah so you you and uh tyvin are label mates because he's also on gun streamer okay so so people can go on gun streamer and watch tyvin and watch patrick and watch tyvin like i would do that i would open two windows and let both of their videos play at the same time and see which side of your brain explodes first <laughs> <laughs> I, okay. Um, no, anyway, no. somebody asked me if I had a holster for it. I do. I've got it up on my uh, blue alpha gear belt. Like I said, I'm a fan of range belts. It allows me just to leave everything on the belt. So whenever I get to the range, put my inner belt on um, and then put this on. Uh, I've got a Safari Land mag pouch up here at a 45 degree angle in the front. Um, a STAC Kiwi 2 plus 1. So one rifle, two pistol. Uh, a tourniquet and a super cool multicam carrier that was the same price as all the other ones. This is a good looking it's, belt. Do you have a code for these guys for blue? What is it? Blue? I don't. I <laughs> seriously, we got to talk to these people, man. Right? Uh, I got a little <laughs> headphone hanger on it, and then I've got a Safari Land UBL with a QLS adapter here, so uh, you can switch the holsters out with a cool guy filster holster um unfortunately he's not doing a open run of these right now uh but there should be something coming soon um it does work with the mmp compensator on the 509 tack um, i was talking to john earlier today at uh, at filster about it it also works in their spotlight holster so if you're looking for a 509 holster like that's something to look into um i i, I don't think it, it, like the hat i'm wearing i don't want yeah so read the comment there i think that's from warsaw patriot yeah they they make a cryptic kydex I, I don't want that like the reason i've got multicam on my belt is because it was the stiffest material and like yeah i i mean i'm not i'm not big on all of those camo patterns and whatever have you mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't i don't get too into that yeah the arms men says filster is awesome yeah no filster is great john is a smart dude like he knows what he's talking about knows what he's doing um it's a phenomenal holster it's a great looking holster yeah and gizzard um, gary says depending on the size of the room etc too much light could temporarily blind the shooter as well as the target if you don't know how to use a light then yeah that's absolutely true yeah. Like, I, I mean, you know, get some light. There are people that give you training on light and stuff like that. So. Yeah, man. Like, um, <laughs> I mean, Warsaw Patriots trolling me in, in the uh, the comments. Um, yeah, no, like, it's Im important to understand how to utilize your gear. And, like, if you're going to throw the light into a mirror or something, and yes, you're probably uh, <laughs> going to blind yourself because you're being dumb. Just, 
you know, index the baseboard, ceiling, shit like that. Like mm -hmm. if you understand how to use a light, it's not going to blind you. So that 200 lumen nonsense is, is garbage. And like the thing that nobody takes into account is like, yes, you can walk around your house and, you know, like shine your light on stuff and 200 lumens or higher or higher than 200 lumen is going to suck for you. But when it comes down to it, like when you start shooting, you need more light to get through the gun smoke. And that's something that nobody takes into account is like to fight through the smoke generated by, you know, like you're, you shooting, you actually need something that's able to cut through that and still put light onto whatever you're shooting at. So. Okay. In interesting. Interesting. All right. So let's see. Um, I'm trying to look at the comments here and look at a whole bunch of other stuff. So have you, what, what's your opinion of, of the uh, Streamlight? Love it? Uh, the Surefire mm -hmm. X300 yeah. uh, UA. So um, I actually really like the 1000 Lumen version. It's got a little bit less candela, a little bit less throw. Um, so it, it, it reaches out less than the older version. So the 600 Lumen X300 UA had a Surefire Scout head on it, so it had a little bit more throw, uh, but its hot spot's a little bit more narrow. So, like when you're using a flashlight, you've got like the spill around the hot spot and then a really bright bit in the middle. The hot spot on the X300UA 1000 lumen version um, is maybe two to three times larger than the 600 lumen version which is cool because it's like the same intensity almost uh it's just bigger so like you light up a larger area like it'll light up your your entire shed at you know 35 yards or whatever and not just like the door of it yeah okay very cool um so I don't know if the, did we get any questions about it? I don't know if people have any questions that they want to ask. Uh, I got a pistol light. Uh, green light's better than white light for a weapons yeah. light with so here's, so like Yeah, here's a, a good uh, uh, um you you probably can't see this comment, but because it's from the Tyvan show, so I'll read it for you. Oh, okay. Because I think you have the Tyvan show blocked. But I when do. you're wrong, when you're wrong with me, I'm gonna read this comment. <laughs> I'm gonna mute you. Uh, don't mute me. Don't mute me. Um, so Tyvin show says, ha ha gun smoke. So I take it. He is shooting black powder and attack the light and attack. Uh, he says attack the light to his revolver, but I'm assuming he meant attached the light to his revolver. So okay. I think he's, he's challenging your claim of smoke. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know why you would smoke is generated every time that you shoot, regardless of whether it's a total metal jacket, like a, a bullet that is fully enclosed with smokeless powder, like smokeless powder doesn't mean it doesn't have any smoke. It means it has less smoke. It's just a different type of powder. Um, like, I mean, I, I've got a bunch of video that I'm working on putting together, talking about shooting at night and the importance of a good light that's able to cut through stuff like that because after you start shooting two or three rounds on target, like if some dude comes in my house and I light him up with, you know, the flashlights and I start dropping, uh, you know, nine millimeter federal HST on the dude to stop whatever threat is in my house. Um, like there's going to be a significant amount of smoke generated by the, uh, the powder burning. I mean, I got, I, I don't, <laughs> I I don't know how how to to explain it better to him. Uh, I was just assuming he is he's. I uh, think the only way to explain trolling. it better is to get you both to come on on the same show at the same time and hash it out. I'm just I, saying. I, I I told you I would give you 30 minutes for that. <laughs> um, uh, Hen Henshi Zenki says, "Hey Patrick, uh, you have a recommendation for LPBO for BCM RECCE 16." What the hell is that? So he's asking. I'm gonna assume uh, that's a rifle. <laughs> yes, a BCM Recce 16 would be yeah. like a Recce 16. It's a model of rifle by BCM. LPVO be low power variable optic. Um, so for low power uh, variable optic, either the uh, Vortex, um, like Razor HD Gen 2 or whatever the hell it is, whatever the, the new hotness is that uh, 
Grantham just talked about, uh, that is a solid optic. Um, or uh, my vote is going to be for the Collis. Uh, the Collis is, is probably one of the best uh, low power variables I've looked through. Okay, there you go. Hope uh, we answered your question there. So um, let's see. Uh, Highway Run seventy seven says I'm not watching that. I don't know if he's talking about the ma the the uh, matchup Roberts versus Roberts. I I, I don't I don't want to do it either. I, yeah. mean, <laughs> I I regret saying that I would do it, but I said I would do it, and I'm a man of my word. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so there we go. Okay, you know what? So um, do you want to? Do you have some other? Some other uh, accessories and stuff like that you want to talk I, about? I've got other. Here? I've got plenty, man. I've got plenty yeah. here. Because I, I figure maybe we'll maybe you can do that, or we can open. Should I? Yeah. Open? Why, why don't you open that up, and I will yeah. uh, gather yeah. some things up here. So I can open this, uh, just so you guys can see. That is from uh, Eighty Eight Industries, right there. So this is a man can. I've never opened it. It's all sealed up. I'm gonna get out my knife. Where's my knife right here? Here we go. That's a, that goes the knife. So CRKT. Uh, for people who want to know, why do I have a CRKT? So that I don't cry when I lose it. Because when I carry like more expensive knives, for some crazy reason, they fall out of my pocket, and that is really annoying. <laughs> so, and then when you lose an expensive ass knife or a knife that someone gave you that you don't want to lose because you're thinking, man, that person's going to catch up to me at some point and be like, what, dude, what happened to that knife I gave you? Then you have to tell them that you lost it and all that kind of good stuff. So, uh, okay. Okay. Lolo wants us to talk about the convoy while we open this up. So I'm going to open yeah. this. I'm going to open this and go, did you have fun on the camp on the convoy? Dude, it was so much fun. Yeah, we had fun. So, I know so you fun. had some issues with your Tacoma. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, I didn't prep for the trip properly. I kind of screwed up, uh, and that was on me. Uh, yeah, because you put mud tires on a Tacoma? To no, there's nothing wrong with that. I actually uh, get wonderful gas mileage now after I took it to the dealer and like did all the, the stuff I wanted to do before I left. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's really phenomenal now. Um, damn. I don't know where my Glock punch went. Shit. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, so I, yeah, I put, uh, 255, 85, 16s on there, which measure out to be like 33.1 inch diameter tires on a stock Tacoma and drove 4,500 miles in it. Um, yes, no, uh, Boslick, uh, Scott, no, I don't do competition. I, I just haven't been able to find the time for it. I really want to though. Um, but yeah, the convoy was amazing. Um, uh, Ryan Ryan Rep is a madman with a. Uh, yes. No one could keep <laughs> up with him in that freaking. Uh, you that? were no, driving an R eight. Yeah, no, dude, it was a. I still, um, had, I still had a hard time. That guy's no joke. No, I know, dude. He was he was fast. Like I, I think we were doing like eighty five ninety a lot of the way. Yeah. Like I I mean, I had to install a app on my phone that help me keep track of the speed and if you i don't know if you guys can see that me uh mm -hmm. so if we lock yeah, it lock on it. me yeah you look at the max speed that you did was 101.3 yeah and in, in a truck that just was not designed oh yeah that. you were booking i mean listen i could have easily i overtook him if i wanted to here's the thing um, I get, he is not afraid of being pulled over by the police at all. No, no, he's and, not. And, and the police don't see him. He's got like some kind of voodoo and they don't see him, but they see me. <laughs> so, Did you get pulled over? No, but they, you know how many times they just like pulled in right behind me? Like, go ahead, dude. We watch it. You, <laughs> you know, I, let's I saw it a couple of times on the way back. I nearly got pulled over. <laughs> yeah. And then there was that weird time in, uh, you remember that in California where these people were trying to like, uh, flag me down on the highway or something. That was insane. Yeah. Yeah. There was, um, I think they were YouTubers or something, something like that. It was Cali. really weird. Uh, yeah. but yeah, they tried handing you a card on the, the, the highway. Like they were trying yeah. to like hand you something while you were driving, like throw it yeah. into your car. Yeah. Well, they, cause I think they thought I was going to like pull over and I was like, uh, I'm not going to do that on this highway. No, I wouldn't have pulled over period. Like if somebody yeah. started trying to hand me some shit, 
<laughs> so listen, okay, I got this open. Let's take something out of here. Let's take something out of here. Um, There's a couple things. So there we go. There's a couple things in here. Let me take something out. Uh, uh, highway run 77. No, the uh, the tires did not kill my fuel mileage, surprisingly. I still get about 20 uh, miles a gallon on the highway now. Yeah. So just so people know, because I, I went and took a little sneak peek at the uh, at the bag video, right? And uh, I'm not giving away the bags. So... You know, I am gonna give away stuff that's in that's in this box from um, the IV eighty eight man can folks. You know, and if you guys are interested in the in the man cans, you can go check out IV eighty eight eighty eight. Okay, they they sell these man cans. That's how they're able to support themselves and put on the big show, the big show. So okay, so this is the first thing that's in there. This is from this is like a looks like a little uh, wallet pouch from Coltac, and I think there's um. Okay, there's like a 10% off coupon in there from Coltac. So that's the first thing that came out of there. It's like a nice little wallet pouch, you know. That's what's in the wall can in the uh, man can right there. There you go, very cool. So this this is uh this is probably going to be one of the things you guys can let me know what you think about that. There you go. 10% off the Coltac plus this little little wallet thing here. To make some good uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Coltac um, has they have uh, a lot of cool stuff. I've seen them before. They've got some uh, suppressor wraps, right? Have you yeah, seen those? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. uh, they do those. Uh, but the things that really interest me are the bags. Uh, I was supposed to get some from them a while back, and it just never happened. Yeah. So they've got they've they they do a whole bunch of different gear. Uh, let me see. Maybe I'll put some, pull something else out of here. Let's see. Uh, Okay, there's there's also a code in here for uh, forty percent off any blue alpha gear belt. Nice. What? That's yeah, in hey, hey, hey. So yeah, forty dollars, forty dollars off. That's uh -huh. is that the same? That's the same. Whoa, look at that! How fortuitous. Right. Yeah. That's so why every so, time I go to the range. Yeah. So if someone's watching this and they want to get <laughs> what. Let me not show the code, <laughs> so people don't uh, people don't take advantage of it. Let me keep that down here. But right. if you want to get forty bucks off, that's what this card basically allows right there. So that that's going to be one thing on its own that we that we'll give away to someone. And if there was someone watching, I don't know what the, what does like what does the belt on its own that one that you have cost? Ah, uh, I think they start at hundred bucks and then go up. Um, I think it's like one forty. Uh, Warsaw Patriot, yes, I've shot a SCAR, both a SCAR 16 and a SCAR 17, um, and I've shot both in full uh, full auto as well. Okay, very nice, very nice. Those are those are awesome. I wouldn't mind having a SCAR 17 myself. Man. So there's a, there's a pretty big box in here. I'm going to save that. Um, so here's this thing called uh, Magnut by Keybar. You ever heard of that? Magnut by Keybar. There it goes. It's like a nut for your mag. It, now we're talking about nuts. We just got off the yeah. balls. Yeah. So um, it's it's in this little plastic here. I don't know if you guys. I've never. I know Keybar, and uh, I know. I think it's uh, Mike over at Keybar. So they they've been making a lot of different things, and this is the magnet. So I'm guessing it looks like it has some key rings on it, and then these probably. Uh, okay. Set includes two magnets. Each with a press one quarter by one quarter inch rare earth neodymium iron boron in grade N52. Yeah, neodymium magnetic cylinder, which has a pull force of five pounds. So there you go. Magnet is a magnetic quick class specifically designed for the key bar, but works on tools or other pesky items for which you need a quick mounting solution. Okay. Interesting, cool. So that's in there. We'll give that away. We'll give that away too. Let's see what else we got in here. Pull out some big piece of leather. Okay, this is from. Uh, there you go. I I always say Savoy, but it's Savoy, Savoy leather. So I'm assuming that this is like a big uh, one of these, like goes around your wrist. Right? Now we're putting. Or, so this is getting weird, bro. Yeah, or is it like a little dog collar for a chihuahua? There you go. <laughs> and it says, we the people on it. There you go. Boom. We the people. Genuine. Oh, genuine leather. Genuine leather says, we the people from Savoy. 
right? Savoir leather. They make uh, some pretty good stuff, and they're able to uh, put a lot of cool designs in leather. So that's in there. We'll, we'll give that away to someone as well. Let's see what else we got in here. Uh, pocket dump patch. Have you ever seen one of these patches? No, that looks pretty rad. Yeah, that's actually cool. I've never seen a pocket dump patch. I that don't even know. Cool. I don't even know who that's from, but that's pretty cool. Pocket dump patch. That's actually that's actually really cool. There, someone out there is gonna want this. And like I said just now, I'm gonna go over to the video that we put up uh, for of the Maxpedition bags on HankStrange.com. We'll take a look at it. Let's see what do we got here. Uh, so with uh, so with Keybar, there's also a 20% off coupon in here as well. So I think that'll go along with the magnet. I will put that along with the magnet. There's a there's a code in there for that. And then finally inside the box, the box is now empty. There is um, QSP, Better Knife, Better Life. Uh, have you ever heard of that? No. Better Knife, Better Life. I, I don't think I should give this one away to anyone. What do you think? I think I should refuse to give this away to anyone, especially since I have no idea what. Let's see. Let's see what it is in here. <laughs> Then everyone's going to be like, but that's exactly what I wanted. Oh, no, de definitely not giving this one away. So we got a knife in here. There's a knife. And it's on the plastic. So let me see. Let me open this. We're going to have to pop open the plastic on this one and take a look at it. We were oh, talking about patches. Okay. I decided to grab my bin full of patches that I need oh. to get on a patch wall. And uh, I just found one from an after party that I don't remember going to. Uh, what what after party was it? Yeah. Oh oh, I think that looks familiar. I think I've seen that somewhere. I I don't know. I don't remember going was to this, that? but I have it. Yeah, I was at a shot show. Yeah, Crazy Horse through gentleman gentleman's clove, uh, conceal firearms, exposed yeah. boobs, twenty eighteen shot show after party. Yeah. I, I I don't even know where it came from. Yeah. Lola says she's claiming this knife. So here you go for anyone. <laughs> the knife is not going to get, but that's, that's really nice. Actually. Look at that. Oh, I got some uh, scumbags patch here. Oh yeah. That's an awesome. That's an awesome patch. Very rare, very rare. So let's take a look at this knife. Wow. There you go. It's a pretty nice knife. I like it. QSP. Um, and it has IV 88 on it. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to, you know, I'm going to hold on to that. But Lola's already calling dibs on it. So, yeah, I don't know. That's a pretty that's a pretty good knife in there. I like the handle. Uh, it's made of some kind of G material. You know, the late Boy Scout would know way more than I do about it. But it looks like a good knife. Nice blade. Uh, I can't like really it. see the handle. Yeah. So hold on. Here's the handle right there in the way. Wait, I'll lock yeah. it on me. There goes the handle. Yeah, so maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe G10 or something. I don't. Know. Yes, probably, probably. So it's got a nice, uh, got a nice grip to it. Stops my finger here from moving over the hilt or whatever. So you know, I like it. Nice knife, nice knife in there. So huh. very cool, very cool from the man can of the Iraq veteran folks, and that has IV8888 on it. So. Very cool. I enjoy that. I'm not sure. Um, okay. See there. What this is. Uh, this is the Stenthi Stenia. Stenia. Black stone wash blade, black handle. So there you Har go. Harrison, take care. It was uh, good seeing you in the chat. Oh, okay. Is Harry's holsters out? He is. He is. I need to okay. hit him up uh, soon. Yeah. Uh, we yeah we actually have to get him to come back on the show and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, I, I, I really like Harrison. He's good people. Yeah, yeah, he's good. He's a good dude. So there you go. I don't know what you guys. If you guys saw stuff that you liked in there and all that kind of stuff, I think um, some some good some good cool stuff in there. You know, um, I enjoyed that. Lots of cool things in here. Lots of deals on stuff. So other than the knife, I think this was really cool. This pocket dump patch. And uh, has, does anyone else have one of these pocket dump patches? So there you go. I also, this is like, my neck is too big. 
I just had my neck measured, so I don't think this can't go around. Like I have got an incredibly huge neck, along with uh, some other stuff that we won't get into. But <laughs> we were just talking about him. Oh yes, the late Boy Scout. There you go. Awesome patch. Yeah. You know what's funny? I uh, Lola sent the late Boy Scout one of uh, my hats, which I don't know if there's. He had like a limited run of uh, Hank Strange hats around here, and she sent him one of. And he wears it all the time, man. I, I see him wearing that hat all the time. Let's see what else you got yeah, here. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Coming. That's a cast. Yeah, that's a cat. Wait, that's nice. That is a nice patch right there, man. I know that. Uh, that so Nancy at Tough Products. I have like never gifts. seen. That's like a ghost gun. I've never seen that. That's actually a pretty yeah. cool patch. Yeah. 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 And somewhere in I've here, I've got a uh, an f bomb patch that I really loved. Like that was her. Her thing, she yeah. she liked giving f bomb patches out to people. Yeah, which made blue, me very happy. The blue alpha gear is also cool because you get the forty dollars off. So we're gonna yes. go over and give that away. The key yeah, bar yeah, thing yeah. is interesting. I'm I'm down to give that away as well. You know, um, maybe and we we'll get Lola to send some other swag along with whoever gets the stuff. And then of course this from the Coltac. So those I'm gonna give away. Lola said I'm not allowed to give away the knife. I think you should give away the knife. No, so that's not. Then, I think you should, I think you should you. give away. I think you should give away that ghost patch. Uh, no, not that. <laughs> See, dude, I don't think I want to give away this pocket dump patch, but I will. I will because I said I was going to give away stuff that came out of there. So, but that's pretty cool. I don't know when's the next time I'm going to see that. So there we go. What's this one? Oh, the f bomb. Nice. <laughs> Yes, I don't have one of those either. Never seen one of those. That's Psycho like, uh, so yeah. I mean, you know this better than everybody, uh, you know, better than anybody else in you know in in the chat. But whenever you go to these industry events, you end up acquiring like secret swag that no one will. It, mm -hmm. It's like a really select group of folks. Yeah, uh, I think uh, Zev, is it Zev? I think Zev Tactical and one of those guys has like. Some like crazy bunny patches that they give away. They're always very limited editions. I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's not a company that I really work with ever um, on purpose. No. Oh, okay. Oh, you're not fans of the Zev dudes, huh? Uh, I mean, the the tolerances on their stuff is a little bit too tight. Um, and I, I don't know. I, I I would I would prefer to not spend money on their stuff. Okay, understood. Understood. You know, there you go. All right, so. Do you do you have anything else you want to talk about, or should we bounce over? I don't know if you can pull up the Hank Strange channel on on like another window. Um, sure. Yeah. Oh my God, there. that's Tyvin's face. Holy shit! I had to post the link to that video. Oh. Uh, and you saw Tyvin with that, and you didn't even want to look at you. No choices, man. You had to see the Tyvin. How did it feel? Um, uh, I just I, sad. <laughs> Are you you're mad now? <laughs> no, no, I, I I'm I'm reading. Oh, you're reading. Okay. Um, so let's go in here. So I see the Tyvin show commented on here. I see uh Richard Hughes commented, Jay Brennan, the Archangel, Mike Bryant, who I met in uh you were in Colorado. I met him in Colorado and his lovely wife. Shout out to those guys. Uh, David G. Harmsh as well. Vanessa Kitty, Rodney, Ghetto, Dr. Phil is also up in there. Special K, John Gillian, Frankie Yarborough, Imposter, Greg 98K, Rafael Morales, Husey, Chris Bullis, Boss Hog, uh, Red Pilled. Um, um, so here we go. So red pill, all those folks commented. Did you see any particular comment in here that you let's let's do it this way? So I think the coal tack came out first. So let's find uh, someone that we're gonna give the coal tack to. Uh, I'll let, I'll let red, you pick. I'll let you pick this one. So I'd, I'd rather pick the uh, the blue alpha gear. Oh, you want to pick the blue alpha gear? Okay, cool. Yeah. So if, if you guys in the chat have not gone over there and uh, left a comment to win that blue alpha gear coupon like do it because still, you still have a chance th this this belt that i've got is freaking awesome yeah so you still have a chance you can go over to hank strange on youtube the maxpedition the uh, new bags and maxpedition video 
and you comment on it and give, you know, maybe if you give Patrick a shout out, that will help him pick you. I mean, so, maybe. Yeah. Lola, do you want to help me pick who wins any of this stuff? I don't know if she can even hear. Uh, yeah. While, while you're doing that, uh, yeah. we're, while people are heading over there making a comment, uh, Zev, yes, Zev is kind of garbage. Um, their slides are milled too tight to work with most aftermarket barrels. The uh, you, you They <laughs> sent me out, or I, I purchased a Zev slide, I should say. I bought a Zev 19 slide. Um, it wouldn't run... Um, reliably so i sent it back to them and like they said their gunsmith looked at it and what they did is they slopped like a bunch of red grease on the inside of it to make it work properly like way over lubed it um uh, it was like they dipped it in something and then sent it back said it was fine okay that's not good uh but it's it's not the first time i've heard that like their 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 pro one piece magwell is hot garbage like you can pull it off uh, by pulling on the front of the magwell it like comes off of uh, the gun and it'll like you know prevent you from dropping a mag yeah okay all right so let's see i'm going through all of this right now i'm going through all of this um i see richard hughes says hashtag more lola less hank so i'm going to ignore any any comments from richard hughes so i'm going to put in there actually i'm going to ignore this which is kind of ironic <laughs> but also richard hughes he's won some stuff so okay we i appreciate him commenting let's see here who who do we want to win this? I'm going to say um, David G. David G. He says, nice to see a video slash review of different pieces of equipment and accessories. Thanks, Hank and Lola. Um, so I'm going to say uh, congrats. You get the Coltac. There you go. Um, you just have to get in touch with us, David G. Also, make sure that you're uh, signed up on HankStrange.tv, okay? And you can actually send us a message through that, but get in touch with us, and uh, we will we will go through that. Okay, so let me see. Next, I think I'm going to do the the We the People. We the People. Let's do that one. Let me refresh this and see if any new comments have come in here. Um, all right, let's see. I'm going to pick someone out I of feel here. I feel, I feel like they should probably go to Red Pilled. Like his comments and Red Pilled is pretty awesome. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. Red Pilled. I will send you the We the People leather. I'll write this. <laughs> his comment was at Lola Strange. I'm single and looking for love. How did you do it? <laughs> <laughs> From uh, Savoir, some from Savoir, Savoir, yeah, Savoir. Um, yes. and I think next up we've got the blue alpha gear thing. So, um, mystery family has been begging for it. So instead, um, I say, just give it to that person. Okay. So wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I'm trying to keep up with this. All right. So now we're on the blue, the blue alpha coupon. That should probably blue go to alpha mystery coupon. family. Mystery family. Okay. And they made a comment in here. Okay. They made a comment on the live chat and on the other thing. Awesome. Okay. Wait a awesome. minute. Um, what? I see them on the, on the video. They made a comment. What's up? Oh, I'm, I'm trying to look through their channel and I saw a picture of uh, 180 second ideas. Okay. But no, no, disregard, disregard. Uh, give mystery family <laughs> the blue okay. alpha thing. <laughs> okay, you get the uh, blue alpha gear. So all you have to do is get in touch with us. Make sure your uh, your email's registered. Also, for everyone who's gonna get something ever with the Hank Strange situation, please make sure that you've registered your email address at HankStrange.tv. Um, cause you know, you got to do that to win something. So let's go. I'm going to save the pocket dump, dump patch for last. Let's go to key bar and with key bar, you get the, uh, the mag nuts, the magnetic nuts. Um, and you get 20% off at key at key bar. So do you have like uh, do you have like a comment in there or something that you like, or, um, let's see someone who had a good comment to maybe while we were, well, we were talking in here that they came over and uh, uh, you know what? You know who I think should get the nuts? 
I know who should get the nuts. I, I mean, I even though he didn't comment, I kind of want to give the nuts to JB. Yeah, <laughs> no, JB <laughs> can't get the nuts. He did. That wouldn't be fair. <laughs> that wouldn't be fair to everyone who did come over and uh, comment. So let's see. You know what? I'm I'm thinking. Huh. Uh, I'm looking. I'm looking here. I'm looking here. How about um, Boss Hog? Boss Hog should get the nuts. <laughs> He's gonna hate that. <laughs> that sounds yeah. like a win. Yeah, yeah, great. If we get you, upset, um, somebody wonderful. Yeah. I'm gonna put you get the nuts, bro. <laughs> He's gonna I'm like what, dude? Seriously? But that's. Uh, I think what, it's cool. What's, got, what's last up? Yeah. Okay. So that's that one. So the last one is the pocket dump patch. All right. So, so, I think it's really uh, cool. Hold on. Let me refresh. Let me refresh. Make sure you refresh in there in case people. I mean, are still I've already right made now. my decision here. Oh, you have. Oh, you have. Okay. <laughs> is it? Is it the Tyvin show? It is not. No. I don't no. see his comments. He's got a comment there. Do you yeah, want me I, to? Read, you want me to read you his comment? I, I really don't care. No. Okay. Like I've already made my decision. Uh, okay. no, uh, Psycho three uh, three one six. Okay, Psycho. Okay, Psycho. So let me see. Where's his comment? I'm looking for it. Uh, it just says nice backpacks. It's not really interesting, um, which I think is probably indicative of him as a human being. But he oh, had a okay. dickish earlier <laughs> and then whined about not winning. So I figured it would be a nice thing to do. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm trying to see his comment right now. Oh, there we go. I see it. Okay. All right. Congrats. According to Patrick, you get you get the patch more hank less patrick carver <laughs> richard what a dick <laughs> what uh, a dick or uh, richard hugh see that's when when you guys were on there was no fighting it was all love it was all love there was no fighting going on but you know what thanks to everyone who participated in that and sure. who went over and looked at that video and all that kind of sure. stuff it's cool you know, we're trying to like do something different just to get the, you know, get the attention, see if YouTube, even with all of that, with all of that, we floated it, you know, let's see if that floats it up. Make sure you guys actually check out the video and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, and then make sure that you've put your email in with uh, HankStrange.tv and you can actually go to HankStrange.tv and send a message to myself. Either I or Lola will read it and say, hey, I won won this particular thing from Hank and this is my information and all that. And then we'll get it out to you. You know, it may, it may take us a little while, but we'll get it out to you. So thanks to everyone. Let's see if there's any comments here about, uh, Oh, I see safety Harbor firearms is up in here. The Walter is in here. We forgot. Oh, look at that. Oh yeah. He's, Totally ready. Yeah, and you he's wonder why he's breaking up stuff on your deck. Oh, he's doing jazz hands. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> and he's not even, like, this is just amusing him. <laughs> so cute, so cute. <laughs> I can just imagine, like, you two, do you two guys just burn each other out? <clears throat> no. No? Okay. No, 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 no. He doesn't have that much energy yet. See, I remember my, my older son, and he's still like this. He stays up really, really, really late. And uh, and I'm also the kind of like uh, staying up late kind of person. And he would just stay up late. Like, I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to let you beat me, Dad. But he had a, he has, and he still has a big, massive head that he gets from Lola. And uh, <laughs> so his head he's like falling asleep you know and i could see his head dropping off his i have video of this somewhere when he was a little baby and i'm like what's the matter with you are you tired and then he goes no my head is heavy <laughs> yeah you know. blame blame your mother <laughs> so yeah yeah he gets that from lola's side of the family they have unusually massive craniums <laughs> yeah so which I think on women makes you look, if you're short and then you got a big head, makes you look cute. So, you know, can't. Uh, that's new. That, that, that's a new theory. <laughs> no, you don't I agree with like, that? I feel like you're, digging, you're trying to dig yourself out of a hole. <laughs> no, Lola, Lola, she knows most of my theories and she's heard that one before. Uh, 
<laughs> uh, Vanessa Kitty says we get uh, to see the X Christmas tree this year. I hope. I think that's what that message is. And uh, Larry Fulton says he makes as much sense as the rest of the show. Ha 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 ha. And then Lola says, are you out of your mind, Hank Strange? Your head is twice the size of my. No, that's not true. I have a very dainty head for my body. Very dainty. Uh, that, that, perfectly. So basically what you're saying is you have a normal size head and your body has become extra large. Uh, it could be because possible. <laughs> I know my back is huge, man. Whenever I see my back, I'm like, what the hell? It's like massive, massive back. But no, my head's totally normal. My head's totally normal. <laughs> uh, looks like Walter's in here. We forgot. You know what? We forgot to troll Walter. So what I, are you doing? I, I'm I'm bored and dry you're fire. pulling the trigger. Okay, you're bored. You're bored. Okay, let's find let's find something. Okay, you know what? So I I promised you we would talk a little bit about Caltech guns since I've got some sitting here. What think you of the Caltech guns? Hey, I I'm not terribly partial. Nothing, okay. that, no, nothing that uh, they do really intrigues me. No, okay, so so you don't like the PMR pistol at all? Uh, no, they're kind of explodey. Yeah, okay, all right. I've had this one here for a while. PMR pistol, don't like that, huh? Twenty-two. What do you think about the twenty-two Magnum? If you don't like I, the twenty-two, if you I don't mean, like the I, PMR, not a fan. I have no use for it. No. Don't like the 22 Magnum. What about the CMR? CMR again, kind of explodey. Okay. And, uh, Steve Fisher, you're yeah, love you, buddy, but uh, that's a stupid carry gun. It's a stupid truck gun. What's a stupid truck gun? What the, is he saying? Is a truck gun? The 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 PMR? No, the other one. Oh, the CMR. Mm -hmm. It could be. It could be a truck gun. If you know Rimfire. how to use it. No, it's rimfire, and rimfire is inherently like. <laughs> yeah, rimfire is the big issue with it. The things I like about it is the weight and all that kind of stuff, and capacity, etc. But uh, the fact that it's rimfire is where you can run into issues. I don't. I don't load up thirty round. What is this like? A, is it thirty rounds or? Yep. Yeah, I. Uh, I don't put more than like 25, 26 in there. And then you have to make like properly load these magazines and have your magazines loaded up. So it's not the kind of thing that you want to load under pressure. Like uh, one of the things with 22 Magnum is soft, so you could easily bend it with the rim on, on on the casing of one of the rounds. You could bend it. You can get rim lock, all those kinds of things. But uh, properly applied, this thing is like a laser beam. Although suppressors. Hey, Suppressors okay. can get a little explodey on these. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've seen you shoot, buddy. What? <laughs> like what a laser, my... laser beam. <laughs> Wait, you're talking about what did you see me shoot? Uh, I mean, that uh, well, I was terrible hand, shooting hand, something. And handgun stuff, generally. Uh, yeah. Oh, you mean like a handgun that you crazily modified the crap out of? Uh, no, that was actually a stock gun, sir. Which one was this? I'm trying to remember. Uh, the, the FN. Oh, the uh, FN. So somebody asked if I had shot a RAS 47 or C39 V2, or ha have I shot either of the Caltex? Is that what you're asking, Lola? Um, I've shot the pistol -y 22 mag and wasn't a huge fan of it. Mm -hmm. they just, it's just not my jam. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, listen, I think that there's uh so you you would say there's no purpose to the PMR or the For CMR? me personally, no. For you. For you. Okay. Yeah. I've I've shot these with success. I have videos of them of me shooting them and stuff like that out there. Uh 22 Magnum, man, that moves pretty fast. Yep. You know, you can unload a bunch of 22 Magnum, it can punch through. I think Mac did um I think he did this <laughs> and the 57 pistol if I'm not mistaken to see what it could punch through. So, you know, it's a big part of it is like the cool factor. So I take uh, I take tests on some YouTube channels with the same vein as I do their um, gauntlet tests and stuff like that. Oh, oh, you don't like Max gauntlet stuff? It's not like 
something mm -hmm. <laughs> I have issue with people referencing it as though it were some scientific test that proves something about a particular firearm when in fact like it is a sample size of one it, and it has been described as entertainment by the dude that puts them together so mm -hmm. most of this is entertainment most of this most of it yeah yeah um there's a lot of entertainment wrapped up in what we do i classify what i do as entertainment you know and everyone should take everything with a grain of salt i do try to give people um as good information as i can out there i've gotten in trouble even like with the caltech guys i've gotten in trouble for just like putting up raw videos of what happened uh with guns and stuff like that but you know and sometimes it goes in their favor i've found that when things go in the favor of people they're all happy about it but when it goes or when they perceive that it goes against them they get mad so like in the in the case of Caltech, i did a rdb video that actually a lot of people that bought the rdbs told me that watching the video i did helped them make up their mind to buy it but Caltech hates me because of that video which is weird and uh, and the thing that I think was wrong in that video is that it kept spitting out suppressed. It's it spits out uh, GI mags, you know. And then they didn't put any QD points on their modern bullpup rifle. So yeah, but that was that was about it for my point. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I've got a little bit of uh, stuff. Uh, yeah, Armament and Axis, where is the next three-gun competition? Um, I, I don't do shotgun stuff, so fair warning there. Um, like I'll, okay. <laughs> I'll suck it up there. I don't even have a semi-auto shotgun. Um, so some of the guns that I have on hand here, we've got a SIG P320X5 in 9mm. Mm -hmm. uh, this one was pirated from a friend. Uh, okay, I was gonna so, say you didn't mess with it too much. No, uh, and it's gonna stay the way it is. Uh, no, no, it's totally stock. Uh, this oh, the slide. Stock. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, it comes uh, stock with these holes up top. It, it comes stock with the adjustable sights. Uh, you can mount a red dot on here if you want. It comes stock with the magwell um, and all that good stuff. You know, and the extended uh, mags. Um, but. Like, uh, I say pirated, but I swapped a friend for a G3 that I had that I had acquired through Alex C. And, uh, like, just like this better. It's a really phenomenal gun. And I likes it a lot. Yeah. Um, We got a Brownells thing here. Okay, what is... Let me see. So, mm -hmm. this is one of the uh, Glock slides that they offer. This one is they are... Uh, 19 LS slides, so it's a Very 17 nice. length slide on a 19 size grip. So it gives you guys the 19X that you all wanted <laughs> because you don't understand things. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, I just completed that last night. Uh, okay, uh, looks good. Yeah, no, I'm I'm, I'm really pleased with it. Um, it makes me very very happy. Uh, speaking of Brownells, before you go on to the next thing, <clears throat> did you see Ryan's uh, retro video? I did. Yeah. What do you think yeah. about it? Uh, I saw it when we were on the convoy. It was it was pretty good. I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. I know he's been um, working on it for a while. Yes. You guys should check that out. Is what what is that gun in there? Is that the the the, the uh, three hundred eight and the something like that? Um, whatever their uh, you know three hundred eight AR thing is. Mm -hmm. What is uh, this? So, uh, yeah, a stock MMP9 uh, M20. So uh, I got my hands on a full-size MMP9. No. Are you just taking out stock guns because I said something about you not leaving anything stock? Is that what's up? Um, Is that your plan here? You're trying to actually, prove me wrong? They're all, they're all kind of stock. Like, I didn't think about it until now. <laughs> don't try. Don't even try to. Don't try that. So we've got a Hudson H9. Okay, very cool. You're are you still testing this or you made up your I mind haven't, on this? I episode? haven't even I haven't even gotten into the testing on this quite yet. Um I did have to switch the front side out for one that they provided because uh like I was shooting pretty damn low with it in factory form with the uh the Trigicon H D that ships with it from the factory. Yeah. I haven't really tested the Hudson yet. I've I think I've shot 
I've shot them here or there. I haven't really gotten a chance to get my hands on one. I um, probably need to. It's a nice gun, you know? I mean, like, I don't know if it would be something that I would use for anything beyond, like, fun time at the range. It's it's pretty unique. Um, I will say that. Mm -hmm. It's like if uh, you... Yeah, I mean, I know this may seem silly to some people. First of all, I, I like the idea of what they're doing, but I would get it just based on, you know, it's the first iteration of what they put out, and I think uh, down the line that, you know, may have some collectability value. But I would also like to just see, like, what happens with that thing if you shoot it a lot. Uh, yeah, and that's the, that's the plan. Um, I'm... I'm probably going to shoot this thing a lot um and i'm probably gonna start capping my tests at about 2,000 rounds uh because 5,000 is just way way too much time um what else do i have uh volt volchek v says hudson states the gun was zeroed with 147 grains so 115 shoots low what do you say to um it? yeah I've, I've talked with Sai about it i was shooting 124 grain stuff and um like it was still shooting significantly low, like, you know, eight, 10 inches low at 15 yards. Uh, so. Yeah. And JB says they should have fixed all the issues and improve customer service before coming out with new guns. Probably would be a bad idea. Uh, so I got another Brown slided Glock here. This was just a standard 17 with uh, Dawson Precision sights on it. And I'm currently testing one of the new 20-round Torque Mag magazines in the gun. Okay, uh, how are those working out? Good so far. Uh, they, they work real well. They drop free and all that good stuff, as you can see. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, had no issues with it as of yet. Yeah, um, I think maybe, you know, like if you used it on one of your things, like putting, a, you know, 2000 rounds through it or something like that, that. I don't know if you use that or when you do that, you just use standard magazines. Oh, I, I just cycle whatever I've got in. Um, that just happened to be one of the mags that made it with me on this last range trip. Um, I, I, I'm just... When it comes to like mags that I would rely rely on, like it's always factory mags. I, I'm never going to rely on, uh, you know, Magpul, P mags for Glock or any, you know, like the Yegman Torque mag, any of those. Like I'm always going to go for a Glock mag. There's no reason. Yeah, um, and I think uh, I know JB still has has some like stuff to say. He says they should have fixed all the issues and uh, no, I think he said that they already changed the front side on the guns. It was a problem. Um, that's correct. On the, on the yeah. H9A, on the aluminum frame version, they did change over to a fiber optic yeah. on site. I think one of the things that happens when, like, so I think in the in the case of Hudson, they came out with this gun. Everyone got really excited. Like, the, the marketing stuff and everything blew up and it, everything got crazy. And sometimes pe companies, especially when you're putting out your first thing, just get in way over their head. So a lot of times with that, you just need to regroup and then get to the nitty gritty of what it is to be a firearms manufacturer, right? And yeah. Deal with, all, deal with all the problems head on, talk to the people, spend a lot of time talking to the people, dealing with their problems, uh, fixing issues, perfecting things. You know, you've already got momentum on your side, but that's, you know, it's easier said than done. Yeah. Uh, sugar thoughts on the Hudson. So uh, it's very good. It's It's got um, a little bit of take up, which I like a lot. Um, and you come to a pretty stiff wall there and then a uh, little bit of creep and, you know, crisp break, you know, like it's probably one of the best. It is, in fact, the best striker fire trigger that I think I've come across yet. Um, yeah, but I, I'm not totally in love with it. And I'll get into that whenever I spend a whole lot of time shooting it. Mm hmm. See what else? Um, yeah, let's talk about the uh, 509 TAC a little bit because, like, we really didn't talk about it that much. Like, you've seen it, uh, people have watched my video on it, uh, mm -hmm. but I haven't really talked about how cool this gun is. Uh, so I'm gonna 
grab my screwdriver here since I already lost zero on this dot for changing out um, changing out that battery. I'm going to show you what makes this thing so damn cool. Yeah, I think Glock Shooter 79 wants to know, says, looks like it may have some over travel, does it? I'm assuming, uh, is, is yeah, he talking about but, the, is that the Hudson trigger? Yeah, but who cares? Like, over travel isn't that big of a deal. Like, I mean, not really. Yeah. And uh, Warsaw Patriot says he's interested in the folding Glock. Um, yeah. So the cool thing about the 509 TAC, and if you want to lock it in on me, uh, it's got a place to mount your red dot sight, right? Mm -hmm. So you pull the red dot sight off. You get this little plastic piece. This little plastic piece here is just a spacer to make the dot level. Mm -hmm. The cool thing is you got the holes right into the slide, similar to MP core. But what makes it better than the MP core is it gets a little bit lower by using this segmented mounting plate. So hmm. this is the interchangeable part that allows different dots to be used. And underneath that, you'll see there's an O-ring. The O-ring tensions everything and makes it to where you don't have to use Loctite on it. That's what makes the red dot mounting uh, solution on this particular gun so damn awesome. So it allows mm -hmm. you to put whatever you want on there. You don't need to use Loctite. Just hand tighten the screws and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. So it's super, super cool. But it's got some pretty awesome features on it. Uh, the, the factory sites, the you know, tritium suppressor height sites co-witness perfectly in the lower third on like an RMR or Delta point. Um, you got a four and a half inch cold hammer force barrel with a half by 28 threads, uh, pick rail, which I've got my X 300, uh, you a thousand lumen version mounted to, uh, like I said, it's got some pretty badass serrations. The texture on the grip is awesome. And you get 24 round mags with the gun. Right out of the box. Yeah, that's pretty cool. What is the price on this thing? Uh, MSRP is one thousand forty nine. I think that it can be had for under eight under eight hundred dollars if you go to some club buying websites. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Are you speaking of the uh, Big Daddy Unlimited? No, I think that all you save is about uh, two and a half Walter bucks on Big Daddy Unlimited. Okay, only two and a half Walter Box. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I understand that Walter Buck correlates to a yeah. hundred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mystery Family, yes, that was the FN 509. Yeah. So are you all done with that? You've wrapped up that uh, that whole thing? I mean, not really. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I just got done running a bunch of ammo through the CZ 75 TS orange. Mm -hmm. So nine millimeter competition pistol, single action, not a huge fan of the trigger. I think it's too, uh, surprisey, uh, but it does shoot really, really well. So if you take a look at that target, that top round is called flyer because the trigger is too light, you know, then shooting at 15 yards, I've got a, a solid, uh, 90 out of 90, on the shots that went where it was supposed to go. Um, so pretty impressive performance out of that gun at 15. And okay. the one that I was saving for last that really surprised the shit out of me, uh, that is the Rock Island Armory. What, a, what the hell is this thing? Uh, M1911A2 FS TAC. So, uh, you know, double stack 1911 not super fancy or nice or anything like that, but I've got a thousand rounds of this gun so far, not a single failure with it. Um, and at 10 yards, um, that, that, that is 10 yards, dude. That's, that's some yeah. pretty damn good shooting. Mm -hmm. So, um, like really, really wonderful. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Yep, so look for a review on that coming up soon. Awesome. So you know what? I think we're we've like hit the uh nine o'clock hour. 
we should probably start wrapping up. I don't know if there's any questions. Yeah. I'm trying to look through here and see if there's any. What? Uh, you know, uh... If there's any questions. Um, seems like definitely Armament and Axes is taking some exception to you. Uh, apparently. So, uh, so I didn't, you know, he, he could have, you know, you can come on. I, I, I haven't. Yeah, I'll be I glad to send you the uh, the link. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I apparently, he wants me to he, fucking drive to Ohio to compete in his three gun competition. Like he's been repeating the same questions over and over and over and over again, um, which is kind of weird. But whatever. Okay, I didn't know. I didn't see that. So he was what? He was challenging you to a three gun I, match? Apparently, you know, come, come okay. out and shoot against me in a competition, blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm not fucking driving to Ohio to compete against you. Um, yeah. And then, and then I, I don't know, like, yeah. Um, let, let me just say, let's all keep it civil. We do not have to agree with each other. You know, I'm <laughs> all for people having different points of view and stuff like that. No, uh, I've got nothing against a nice little friendly competition, but let's all make sure we keep everything civil. No, no, that's fine. That's uh, um, like, I think it is, uh, interesting when when JB starts calling people uh, you know a turd and uh, JB kind of went off a little bit and said you've been trolling and questioning Patrick's credibility all chat. Then as you leave, you say Mister Know It All. Yeah, you're a fucking turd. Um, and then, <laughs> that's from JB. Whenever I see that, um, I think it's interesting. Okay, all right. Seems <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, you know. Um, it's it's interesting to see people get into stuff yeah. in the chat sometimes. Well, I, I usually I always hope that everyone gets along in the chat somehow. But I know like when you're not in here and you're in the chat, other people are fighting with you. And then, you know, everyone's always like and so when you actually come on the show, then it always seems to get set some people off. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't understand stuff. it. Like so I think I understand it, but what I'm trying what, what I want to do is let let different voices be heard. You know, and let different opinions and things like that be heard. And then we can all go out there and figure out what works for us, you know, and what works for one person doesn't necessarily work for the other person. I think maybe that's what you're alluding to with Mac, you know, like Mac can do something and and he could, let's say, torture a gun and it works great for him. And then when you torture it, it doesn't work so great for you or vice versa. You know, it's no, different no. guns, different people, different conditions. No, 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 that's not what I was saying at all. What, what I was saying mm. is that it's, it's not a scientific test. What I'm saying is that people need to stop taking bullshit they see on the Internet as fact and use that as like their proof to prove their point or whatever. Mm. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I've you know, seen. You know who are the testers of guns? You know who are the testers of guns in most cases that I've seen? I, I, the I people, mean, I, us. I mean, it's, and I'm not talking me and you. I'm talking you go out there and you buy stuff and then everyone has like different opinions and this thing happens. And then maybe we can look at a matrix of stuff and go, oh, there's a lot of this happening. You know, I just, I just, you know, that's my whole opinion on the, on the whole gun things. We I, are the beta testers of a lot of stuff coming out. I, <laughs> The, uh, the the chat is out of control. Like oh, some some nothing. some some of the dumb in there is just too much for me. Like, okay. and maybe maybe that's that's why uh, people yeah. get a little upset. Maybe it's whenever whenever I uh, I think your face triggers people, man. <laughs> it's either that man or I, they just don't appreciate that I I don't have the patience to deal with. Yeah, yeah, you know, idiots or whatever. Yeah, whatever. Imposter says he thought you were well behaved tonight. <laughs> okay. I, I don't really. Okay. Yeah, I think you've been pretty much the same. Um, and and obviously, when you come on, I think not everyone agrees with you. I don't listen. I don't think everyone agrees with me or whatever. So, hopefully, we can just have discussions. We don't get like too deep into it. Even with you and Tyven, I don't really want you guys to get all crazy like that. You know, I'd like to see you guys just work things out and somehow get along. Yeah, I, I mean. Just, Really, I, I have again I have no issue. Yeah, I think sometimes Jesus people just. Christ. Oh my god! I think sometimes All people right. just right. don't. People just right. don't like someone's face, or just chemically just don't like a person. I, I just. I, 
I, I, I'm, I'm done giving shits at this point. I see 2020. I understand that Max says it's not a scientific test. I said that that Tim has told me that it is not a scientific test. The problem is people like you, people like the viewers on this particular live chat that will take that as absolute truth and run with it. They run off to their gun store and say, man, I, did you see that, that video on the Glock where it failed the fire when it was uh, submerged? Like that, that is the problem. The problem is the people that are digesting the content and don't understand how to different, like tell the difference between entertainment and factual information. That's the problem. Okay. So you're addressing oh, specific fuck. people, right? No, not, not specific people. I, this, this is like the okay. point in I general, in get, general yeah. people who watch, who would watch that video and then I get it. I understand. Listen, I think ultimately um, you've got lots of information to share based on your experiences and everyone, you know, we, we all have that and we're I, all bouncing ideas between each other. We should probably just wrap it up before it gets really crazy and really out of control. Yeah, yeah. No, I think yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, out, I'm, I'm out, guys. Yeah, let's uh, hold on one second. Just just uh, hold on right there. Okay, guys, listen, we're, we'll wrap it. We'll be back tomorrow. looks like, okay, Patrick. Patrick is uh, has dropped out. What can I say? All right. Well, listen, we're supposed to have like a free exchange of ideas and all that kind of stuff here without everyone getting like too caught up in it. So listen, I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm trying to I, I, I think Lola told me, but I totally forgot who's coming on tomorrow. But we'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. Thanks for watching. Peace. We're out of here. See ya.